about drive yourself forward is a lot of times we get to 90% and this last 10% is the critical part for us. It's like getting it out the door, getting it to the donation site, getting it to consignment. So if you drive yourself forward, be sure to give yourself some kind of reward for getting this job done because it's not always just the emotion that you're going to feel lighter once it's left. It's also the emotion of I've accomplished something. So her strategy is to um, pick a room to get started in and then um, put things in their place. If you want to get rid of it, it goes into a bag or a box. If you're going to throw it away, it goes into a trash bag. Um, and then she actually gives you a little bit more fudge room. You, you could put it in a box to think about it. And then finally, um, put it in a box and do some storage of it. Because there are going to be things that all of us really don't have a use for, but we still love. So, but we want to store them appropriately. Kathy Peel, who um, her book is A Busy Mom's Guide, she is the founder of the Family Manager Coaches, and her strategy is to declutter in a day. And so she thinks about getting this project put at a certain time, so you eliminate all the distractions, gather all your materials, whether it's boxes or bags, and then start with the most cluttered room so that you're really moving forward in what's the most frustrating spot. And so then, just a little bit about my method. And I like to tell people to start with baby steps, to be thinking about how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And that's my mantra all the time, one baby step at a time, okay? So start where you find that you can make the most success in a small space. And that small space might be a junk drawer, it might be a linen closet, or it might be just 15 minutes a day in your own closet. And as you're starting small, be thinking about what kind of strength works best for you. If you're a visual person, which 80% of us are, we're gonna wanna see it so we know we have it because that out of sight is out of mind. So as you're decluttering, be thinking about if I see this and I know I have it, will I use it? If I don't love it and I don't use it, out it goes. And then what I think is really powerful for people is to find a paper partner or a clutter buddy. And that is a trusted relationship with someone who's gonna help you make these decisions. Because I find it's hard for people to make decisions by themselves. Because there's a lot of external processing they need to do. So they need to talk it through sometimes. And also by having a partner there, it helps you be more accountable to getting started. So whether it's your stuff or your paper, which paper seems to be the hardest thing for people. And as the paper starts, you know, more papers, you're thinking, what do I do with it? Do I need it? When will I need it again? Just start by talking through some of those things. And, and having a paper partner, some people I found can do this on the phone with each other so you don't have to be in the same space. But be thinking who could be that trusted person that could work with you to help you make decisions and be more accountable. And the other thing I like to say is get things out to the universe and God is going to find the right person for them. Because we are, as perfectionists, thinking, I want to get it to the right person. And so if I don't get it to the right person, I can't get it out of my house. So again, just get it out into the universe so it'll be out there. And then as I shared with you, done is perfect. So be thinking, how can I drive this to completion? How much more time is this going to take? How simple can I make this so I can get to getting it finished? So we have five different strategies now that will help you with your decluttering. And so as you leave here today, I want you to think about the one place and one baby step, and I want you to write it on the top of your page about decluttering. So I'm gonna give you a minute or two just to be thinking, what's your action that you're gonna leave here with? And I just want to share one other thing with you about paper before I turn this over to Leslie. And um, I think the hardest thing about paper, again, is knowing what to keep and for how long. So if you go to realsimple.com, there is um, a record retention schedule. And so you want to type into their little search bar, how long do I keep documents? And it's going to pull up, it's April 2000 is an issue and some of the rules about paper really make things a lot easier for you to know how long to keep them what i find with people is they get stuck on the things 
that are not legal or financial, what they really get stuck on is, I want this article on how to build a garden. I want this article on how to decorate my house. I want 50 articles on how to organize my house. <laughs> so it's really the things that are um, being pulled out of magazines that I find. And that information is so much easier to find on the internet now. And even recipes. If people really get stuck with recipes and pulling them out. And there's so many sites, allrecipes.com, foodtv.com, so many ways to get recipes. And when you're getting ready um, to make a change with how you've been doing your paper, I like to share this little paper sorter with people because I find everyone needs a command center in their house to get started. And that's where all these things are, like a tsunami of paper is coming in. So you need a way to break it into a baby step. And the command center is the first step. So as things come in, you eliminate the junk, shred the things that you need to. So this is all set up as a station. And then sort into, this is called a desktop sorter. And it can look like anything you want it to look like. It can be a little box with these hanging files. It could be wall pockets that are mounted in your kitchen that are just a little open slot that are attached to the wall. So just be thinking, what are the categories for you? And most likely they are some kind of action, some kind of pending, something where you have to collect bills because you're still getting bills and if you do, even if you do online bill pay, and then something to hold the things that are going to become files. And just by creating a station for yourself like that to start with makes the biggest difference for you feeling overwhelmed about your paper. So. So who's going to go out and tackle some decluttering? Y'all ready? Well, I'm going to turn it over to Leslie. She's going to tell you what to do after your declutter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.